This issue has been receiving a lot of positive reviews, which is great news for Ghost Machine. But now I'm here to put a stop to that. Howdy, I'm Kurt Williams, and today we're talking about issue one of Rook Exodus by Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok. This issue came out last week. I know, I'm late. I'm busy. Along with two other titles from Ghost Machine, Redcoat and Geiger. I made a separate review about Redcoat, which was my favorite of the three, and Geiger was also very good, but I wanted to take a second to talk about Rook. Because it's the worst, most uninspired piece of trash comic book I've ever had the misfortune to lay my eyes on. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's pretty good. So Rook is the main character here, and Exodus is the the name of this planet that he lives on which was terraformed by Earth when everybody realized that Earth was doomed and we had to make a new one. The helmet that he wears enables him to communicate with the crows on this planet kind of instinctively, so he's like a farmer and he has some control over the ecosystem which they're trying to make replicate the Earth's ecosystem as closely as possible. But the engine that was running Planet Exodus failed and all the people who had money got off the planet when they could and the people in charge said that they would send back ships to take care of the employees, such as Rook, but those ships never came. So now everybody who's left there is trying to get off the planet any way that they can, and most of them are failing. Rook is also in the process of building his own rocket so he can escape Exodus, but he's not really having a great time with it. His good buddy is a guy named Swine, who has a helmet that allows him to connect to 40 to 50 feral hogs, and he's really not much help. He's of the mind that he should stay on Exodus because it's not so bad, whereas Rook just wants to get out. And that seems to be the main theme of this series, fight or flight, which is such a spot-on double meaning that it almost doesn't really feel like a double meaning, because to commit to the idea of flight from this problem, he has to literally fly off the planet, and he's also connected to crows who can fly away from all their problems. The alternative to flight, which is fight, involves not only dealing with this increasingly hostile environment on planet Exodus, but also, as we find out at the end of the issue, there's some pretty hostile characters still living on Exodus that he would also have to fight. And that's all I really want to say about the plot right now. As for the merit of the issue itself, yeah, it's pretty good. I was lying at the beginning. It's a great issue. I'm a big fan of Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok in particular. I think his art is really well done in this issue. I've always been a big fan of his. His art is meticulously rendered. Tons of gritty detail in there. It's a very early 2000s vibe like David Finch or Gary Frank. You can zoom in anywhere on any of these pages and he's thought about the textures of every single detail in there. It's really amazing. His expressions and body language are so powerful you don't even really need a script to know what each character is thinking and feeling. And that's, that's the goal. That's what you want when you're a comic artist. You want to convey so much information so concisely, and he does. Brad Anderson's coloring is also spot on in this issue, as it normally is. He seems to really excel in the way that light bounces off of certain textures, like the lighting information that's conveyed by the colors on this sign here, that's really well done. Or this page where he's in a movie theater watching a black and white movie, the coloring on here is so appropriate and so subtle, but conveys so much information. Visually, this comic is, and I don't use this word lightly, perfect. This is the exact kind of layout and composition and detail that I have in mind when I think of a great comic. Faybox seems to have a thing for these nine panel layouts in particular. He's been doing this for a while, especially when he works with Jeff Johns on, I think, Doomsday Clock as well as Batman 3 Jokers. It seems like kind of a throwback to more classic comics such as Watchmen, and I really appreciate that because I think that the best artists are the ones who can use a very limited regimented space effectively. It's great. It's really fun to look at. In terms of the story, as far as the setup goes with the dying Earth and a new Earth that everybody had to move through and now that's not going as well as it could be. I think that that's a little bit tired, but I'm sure that some people would disagree. Plenty of people, I'm sure, would say that Redcoat wasn't as fresh as I thought it was, so maybe it's just what people are more geared towards. So, what's fresh for me isn't what's fresh for you. Maybe you'd like this storyline more than I do. The intense examination of the fight-or-flight debate, whether one is more virtuous than the other, is interesting to me. I'm really hoping that we can dig into that idea as the series goes. Overall, I would say that this issue coming out is a great day for fans of 90s comic books. Fable Fabok's art is not nearly as extreme as the 90s were, but he's definitely got some very muscular dudes covered in spikes and pouches and military outfits. Now, Jeff Johns is much better at pacing and including the human element in his stories than typical 90s comics were, so it has that going for it. But the overall vibe of the comic is gritty and exciting and action-packed for sure. However, the main character Rook is also giving off 
pretty strong Mandalorian vibes. He's a dude in a big metal helmet who's kind of a man of few words and just wants to get his thing done and get the frick out of here. There's definitely a space cowboy vibe to it, is what I'm saying. So, sorry about the misleading intro. I definitely really enjoyed this issue, and I'm looking forward to more issues of the series. My one real complaint is I feel like I have to convince myself that there's depth in the issue. I don't think the issue did a great job of convincing me that there's going to be a lot of depth, and I guess I'm worried that I'm giving more weight to the fight versus flight debate than the issue intended me to give. So, maybe the issue was a little bit thin, but I think that there's a lot of room to grow, and I'm hoping to see it become even better than it was in this first issue. So I'd say that it's deserving of at least a high 8, if not a 9 out of 10. I still like Red Coat better, but that's just personal preference. So make sure you've got this on your pull list. Everything that Ghost Machine is doing is amazing, and I wholeheartedly recommend all of it. And if you read this issue, what do you think?